Jeff Smith began his martial arts training in 1965 at Texas A&I University in Kingsville, Texas, with black belts developed under June Ree and Alan Steen. He earned his black belt from Grandmaster June Ree in 1968. Throughout the late 60s, Jeff Smith competed regularly as a student, consistently placing first in tournaments throughout Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. It was an exciting time in the heart of the blood and guts era of hard contact, bare knuckle fighting. And while on the weekends going toe to toe with the best fighters in sport karate at the time, he had established himself early on as a stirring and impactful teacher and coach with an instinctual ability to motivate students. These talents were recognized by his mentor, and he quickly became one of the top instructors in the Jewry organization. And while he was getting recognition as a competitor, teaching the martial arts would lead to the biggest change of his life. In the late 60s, Grandmaster Ree moved to the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and established a chain of Jun Ree Taekwondo schools. In 1970, at Grandmaster Ree's invitation, Jeff Smith relocated to Washington to act as director of instruction for Master Ree's growing chain of martial arts schools. He eventually operated Jun Ree's top school and became chief instructor and general manager. He was also heavily involved in growing Jun Ree's safety equipment company internationally. About that time, another Jun Ree Institute student came to Jeff Smith and Jun Ree's attention, the talented and enthusiastic young star, Stephen Oliver. The new decade not only saw an expanded role in Master Ree's growing organization, but it also saw an explosion of Jeff Smith, the competitor, on the national tournament circuit scene. Smith racked up victories against nearly every top fighter of the day, and his dominance gained quick attention with his recognition in the mainstream of martial arts media. In 1973, Jeff Smith received the prestigious Bruce Lee Award from Bruce Lee's widow, Linda, and Professional Karate Magazine. Helping to present the award was his good friend and fellow champion, Joe Lewis. June Ree's invention of safety equipment, along with Smith and Lewis's embracing a full-contact karate competition, helped put kickboxing on the map as a real sport. In 1974, fellow June Ree black belt Mike Anderson hosted the first World Professional Karate Championships in Los Angeles, California. Smith, Lewis, and kicking sensation Bill Wallace took their places in history when they each won the first World Professional Full Contact Karate Championships. The event was a top-rated program on ABC's Wide World of Sports for that year, and it was seen by over 65 million people. Well, without those the rubber shoes, it would be fake. Tried for a scissor takedown. As a preview of Jeff Smith's future fight career, his fight with Canadian Wally Sloki was the most exciting bout of the evening, with Smith scoring a dramatic come from behind victory. On the strength of both his point karate success and his leadership in full contact in 1975, he was inducted into the Black Belt Hall of Fame as Fighter of the Year. As the fledgling sport of full contact kickboxing emerged, Jeff Smith's legend grew as he aggressively pursued all challengers to his title. This desire to take on all comers would soon have Jeff Smith at the center of one of the biggest sporting events of the 20th century. In 1975, boxing mega promoter Don King handled high profile karate star Kareem Ala. To show off his newfound talent, King scheduled Allah to be the first fight on the undercard of the historic third bout between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, an event known forever in the history books as the Thriller in Manila. Meant as a showcase for the heavyweight Allah, King chose light heavyweight Jeff Smith, a miscalculation that would have a big influence on the careers of both fighters as well as the sport of kickboxing in general. Much to the surprise of the promoters and Allah's entourage, the lighter Jeff Smith thoroughly dominated the fight, beating Allah to the punch and leaving him thoroughly frustrated and defeated. Since then, Don King has had no significant influence in kickboxing in North America. As challenger after challenger fell, one of the most important items on the champ's fighting agenda was to settle some unfinished business with Wally Sloki. The close fight at the first PKA World Championships had left the rematch between these two light heavyweights as the highly anticipated hot ticket at the classic main event of the Battle of Atlanta in 1976. 
This time, Smith thoroughly dominated the fight, leaving no doubt in anyone's mind who was the genuine World Light Heavyweight Champion. In 1978, the legend of Jeff Smith became known in Europe when he fought French champion Dominic Valera in Paris. The fight, which went the distance, was a testament to a hallmark of Jeff Smith's fight career, impeccable conditioning. Well into the later rounds, in fight after fight, Smith only seemed to get stronger, while at the same time wearing down his opponents. He was as effective with one side in front as the other. He was known as a powerful puncher who had very devastating kicks, and a strategic fighter who still had no problem going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the trenches. To say Jeff Smith was a well-rounded would be an understatement. During a period in the late 70s when he dominated the field in full contact contenders, he was experiencing just as much success outside the ring. During this illustrious fighting career, Jeff Smith was developing martial arts schools with June Ree and mentoring up-and-coming talents such as Stephen Oliver. The June Ree operation that Jeff Smith was leading grew to 12 schools with over 3,000 students plus another 5,000 students in affiliate programs in 20 cities around the country. With the dawn of the 80s, the newly retired champion had plenty of avenues to channel his boundless energies. Being an internationally recognized martial arts superstar and teaching in the nation's capital meant that Smith was on Washington, D.C.'s A-list. As a true role model and hero, Smith used his notoriety and Washington connections for service to the community. He did work with the President's Council on Physical Fitness, the Great American Workout, Just Say No to Drugs program, and served as the National Chairman for Karate Helps Kick Diabetes for 10 years. In 1983, Jeff Smith, along with June Ree and Nick Kokinas, helped Stephen Oliver launch his chain of mile-high karate schools in Denver, Colorado. Stephen Oliver was fresh from Georgetown University with a master's in business, and Smith was impressed with his young protege's drive and determination. In 1985, Smith opened his own chain of schools in the D.C. area under the name of world champion Jeff Smith Karate. Both his and Stephen Oliver's chains were huge successes, and they laid the groundwork for something even bigger to come. Smith's inspirational leadership was put to good use throughout the 80s and 90s as a coach for the Waco USA national karate team. He coached teams to five consecutive world championships and coached some of the greatest fighters of the day, including the legendary 1990 Waco USA team that competed under impossible odds and won the world championships in Venice, Italy. Called the greatest team of all time, they featured Steve Nasty Anderson, Linda Denley, Mafia Holloway, Lori Lantrip, Christine Bannon Rodriguez, Hakeem and Shaw Austin, Mark and John Graydon, Elsa Cordero, Kevin Thompson, Kathy Marler, and more. And they all knew they could count on Smith for the kind of cool-headed leadership that only experience can bring. They all have a few in there, so this is still much our game. We can still win this whole thing. And by a good margin, if we pull through tomorrow, I can really come through with a lot of wins tomorrow. And we can do that. This kind of savvy has made him a sought-after commentator, official, and teacher and seminar presenter on both the martial arts and high-end martial arts business education. His major focus currently is on his role as director of instruction for the now nationwide Stephen Oliver's Mile High Karate franchise. As a result of his naturally innate ability to teach and motivate, Smith has found Mile High to be a great way to reach more people with the beauty and hope that martial arts brings to people's lives. Jeff Smith is one of the best known and universally respected figures in American martial arts history. As a karate fighter, as a trailblazer in full contact, a phenomenally successful school operator and gifted teacher, Jeff Smith has lived a life of a role model. As a coach, as a mentor, and as a friend, Jeff Smith has made a difference in the lives of so many of those he's touched. As a ninth degree black belt grandmaster and as a leader of the most powerful movement in modern martial arts world, Jeff Smith continues to lead the way into the future. All of this is a legacy of the one and only DC bomber, Jeff Smith.